For over 150 years, Oakwood Cemetery has served our community as a final resting place for those that lived and worked in Raleigh. For generations, families have come here to pay their final respects, come back to visit, and to remember. Oakwood is located near the heart of downtown Raleigh. It is considered part of the rural cemetery movement. It also plays other important roles. A natural wildlife habitat, home to hawks, foxes, deer, and more as well as a place for all citizens of Raleigh to enjoy. Oakwood was created as a park-like setting before Raleigh's own Pullen Park. So for over a century and a half, our community continues to explore our grounds, enjoy our nature, and learn a little bit of our history. Hi, I'm Robin Simonton, Executive Director of Historic Oakwood Cemetery. Today I'm gonna to take you on a little bit of a tour so we can learn about the history that we call Oakwood. Here at Oakwood Cemetery, all of us have our favorite stops on our tours, our favorite stories about the people who rest here. This happens to be one of my favorite stories. This is the grave of Louise Bunker Haynes. She was the sixth child and fifth daughter of Chang and Louise Bunker. Their names may not be familiar to you, but perhaps when I tell you that Chang and his brother Ang were known as the Siamese twins, it may ring a bell. Chang, her father, and Ang, her uncle, were the conjoined twins from Thailand. They traveled the globe and retired in Mount Airy, North Carolina. It is there that Chang and Ang met two sisters, and they married them after falling in love. And they had 10 and 11 children each. Louise and her brother were both born deaf, so they came to Raleigh to attend the North Carolina School for the Deaf. It's there that she met Zacharias Haynes, one of her teachers. He was also deaf from the scarlet fever as a 12-year-old. They fell in love, they married, and they had 10 children. Most of the children rest here around them. If you are a sports fan like I am, then you may remember when Lorenzo Charles made this amazing shot over Akeem Olajuwon to give NC State University's men's basketball team the 1983 National Championship. When that shot went in, Belvano, Lorenzo's head coach, who's buried just up the hill from here, goes running out onto the court, looking for someone to hug to celebrate the victory, and he finds our own Lorenzo Charles. Lorenzo becomes an immediate sports icon. I mean, he shot this basket over a future NBA superstar. Amazing, the shot heard around the world. Lorenzo ends up being a bus driver for a charter bus company. Can you imagine signing up for a bus tour, getting on the bus, and seeing Lorenzo Charles as your driver? Lorenzo was so gracious. He posed for a million pictures with all these people, a sports icon. It's however in that same type of bus that Lorenzo suffers a health issue in 2011, while he's on I-40 driving over a cloverleaf exit ramp and crashes the bus and is tragically killed. It was at the request of the family and NC State University that Lorenzo be buried as close to Jimmy V as possible. In 2011, this was the closest space to his beloved coach. And so he rests here, just down the hill. And Wake Monument donated his beautiful black granite stone to match his coach's monument. Except on the back of Lorenzo's stone is engraved the 1983 version of Tuffy the mascot for NC State. So from Valvano, you can always see Lorenzo. Here we are 
at the grave of Elizabeth Delia Dixon Carroll, Raleigh's first female physician. When she wanted to attend medical school, it became clear she was not welcome in North Carolina to attend medical school because she was a female. So she left the state to attend elsewhere and returned to Raleigh after her studies to sit for the medical exam. On the day she sat for that exam, she scored number one in the group of people who took it. That group was made up entirely of men, except for her. So she beat all the men on that test. She went on to oversee health and sanitation at what became Meredith College. And in fact, under her tenure, she kept the girls safe during the Spanish flu. She taught health and physiology while at Meredith until her death from a car accident in Cameron Village in 1934. She was an advocate during her day for many social causes. She rests here in the Carroll family lot next to her husband. While she was Raleigh's first female physician, and today we applaud that, her headstone does not note that, simply stating her name and dates and who she was the wife of. Her husband, who served as a dentist, has a doctor, interestingly enough, on his headstone. Here we are at the grave of Judge Walter Mackenzie Clark. Judge Clark was from Halifax, North Carolina, and after the Civil War, he opened a law office. In 1885, this led to an appointment to the Superior Court and a long career on the bench. In 1902, he won a contentious election as Chief Justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court. He was also an economic and social reformer. He supported the popular elections of U.S. Senators child labor laws, and women's suffrage. A prolific writer, he penned over 3,200 legal opinions across his career. Justice Clark was a leader in urging North Carolina to adopt the 1893 motto, translated to be, to be rather than to seem. Oakwood Cemetery is a cemetery that today reflects all of the people of our great city and state. But it also reflects our greatest moments as well as our most tragic. We are at the grave of Farouk Basizio, who was born in 1989 and passed tragically in 2014. Farouk was a Raleigh boy. He played for St. David's, went to St. David's school, was the captain of their soccer team, led them to two state championships in 2006 and 2007. He played soccer for NC State and then joined what was then called the Carolina Railhawks and played on their 2011 championship team. In 2014, he reached his dream of becoming a professional soccer player and played for the football club in Finland. It was in 2014, however, that he also went to Prague on a family vacation and unfortunately passed away. Farouk was known for many things, a lover of life, a soccer star, always cheering for the underdog, and a lover of music. He was known as a rapper under the name of Say So as well. Farouk's monument is carved by Paris Alexander, a local Raleigh artist. On it is the symbolized word in Arabic for mother, which was tattooed on his wrist. I'll never forget Farouk's funeral. His pallbearers all had NC State colored red ties, red Converse All-Stars. And they, in a very emotional moment, lifted up his casket onto their shoulders and carried Farouk here to his grave. A young man gone too soon with an amazing legacy of athletics, and most importantly, of being a good person. While he lived a short life, he lived his life to the fullest. So here we are at the grave of Carl Larson. Where do we start about our good friend, Carl Larson? 
Well, Carl was known, as his headstone says, as a Raleigh boy. But he was born in Connecticut, but moved to North Carolina within the year of his birth. He became a graphic designer for the communication services section of the North Carolina State University Department of Agriculture. But it's when he retired that he found his passion working part-time in the photographic collection of the North Carolina Department of Archives. And it's where we meet Carl Larson. He becomes a good friend of the cemetery staff and volunteers as we work on our book about the history of Oakwood Cemetery. Carl, with his co-workers Ian Dunn and Kim Anderson, help us select the right historic photographs for the book about the cemetery. And it's where the fun began. Carl had a great laugh, and we learned so much from him and the team at the archives, and he became our go-to person when we needed anything about architecture in Raleigh or historic folks. Anytime we had a question we couldn't answer, Carl could answer it. For those that knew Carl, and knew that sometimes he didn't always agree with our ideas. When he didn't agree with us, he would say something to the effect of, well, I don't know about that. And today, that's also what's engraved on his headstone. Carl is buried here at his request in Oakwood Cemetery at our green burial ground. When we worked with the family to help select his site, we chose the site right in front of an iconic tree, the state tree of North Carolina, the longleaf pine one iconic part of North Carolina to another, Carl, an icon himself. Thank you for joining me on a tour of historic Oakwood Cemetery. Remember, these are just a few of the thousands of stories of the people that rest here at Oakwood. You're invited to come and visit Oakwood for yourself. We're open seven days a week during visiting hours. Here you can enjoy our grounds, learn the history, and enjoy the nature that surrounds us. To learn more about Oakwood Cemetery, our programs and services, please visit our website at historicoakwoodcemetery.org. Remember, Oakwood Cemetery is truly a cemetery full of life, and it reflects the lives of those that called Raleigh and our great state, North Carolina, home.